Hi everyone, welcoming each one of you all once again. As always, this is your host Dr. Moise Kakiani from Mumbai, India. Friends, in this short little video again, we will be discussing about the use of the Advanced Crown Bridge Veneer Preparation Kit by MIK Dental to prepare a maxillary central incisor for a metal free restoration. The protocol and the principle is the same if this was a PFZ, that's a porcelain fused to zirconia restoration or an Emax restoration. Here again, it's important to understand that the labial aspect of every anterior tooth has two or maybe even three planes, which means your preparation also has to be multiplanar. I always start with the labial aspect of the preparation first. From the kit friends, we pick up the first burr in the metal free cluster. This is the DC 1.4 burr. Because it's a deep chamfer burr, we will sink in only half depth. First, the burr is placed towards the cervical plane. This is what we usually call the plane one of the preparation. Sink the burr half depth over two or three areas, thereby giving you depth orientation in plane one. You now straighten the burr towards plane two and once again sink the burr half depth. You make multiple such grooves in plane two. You can clearly see in this image friends that you have plane one and plane two grooves appearing in two different junctions. Once you have achieved these grooves, you then go ahead and reduce plane one only. This is with the exact same burr. As you can clearly see, the plane two grooves have not been touched at all. This makes sure that your burr angle is correct. Now you straighten your burr and you go ahead and remove the islands in plane two. What this does is it gives you uniform reduction in plane one and plane two of exactly 0.7 of a millimeter. With this, we complete the labial aspect of the preparation. We now move to the interproximal aspect. Like in the previous video, friends, the exact same protocol of the modified interdental burr is used. Here, the MI 0.5 burr, which is the thinner of the two burrs, is used. It's again kept slightly super gingival, being a non-cutting tip. You simply slice through the proximal area. You go ahead and open up the mesial and the distal. You take your probe, you go ahead and fracture the segments. What you've achieved is opening off the contact without traumatizing the adjacent tooth or the interdental papilla. Once the labial and the proximal aspects are complete, you then go ahead and do your lingual or your palatal margin. This is classically done with the help again of the DC 1.2 bar. Most important when making this groove friends is to make sure that the angle of this burr is correct. Now what's the correct angle? Look closely. The palatal incline surface should be parallel to plane one of the labial surface. I've just kept two burrs next to each other here to help you understand this very same thing. Now this essentially friends is in direct vision. So what you do is you keep your burr on plane one of the labial surface, lock your wrist, lock your elbow. Now you're going to use this like a parallel structure, take it simply into the palatal, go ahead and now keeping the burr angle the same, reduce the entire palatal margin towards the mesial, towards the distal. What you've done is now you have a definite vertical column of tooth structure that will provide for resistance form. Once you're through with this, you next reduce the incisal aspect of the preparation. Now, if you see the previous videos in the one that we described the amount of tooth reduction, you would remember incisal edge requires two millimeter reduction. Now, how do we normally do two millimeter reduction? This is what I used to do for years. Make three grooves that were one millimeter deep, connect them together. Make three more grooves that are one millimeter deep, connect them together. Inevitably, friends, we land up under reducing the incisal edge. And this area may then be an interference, especially in protrusive movements, causing the incisal edge of our crowns to fracture or give way. To bring about more predictability to this, we have the IR 2.0 burr. The IR standing for incisal reduction. This is essentially how the burr looks. It has a working tip of 2 millimeters, after which is a non-cutting area. So what you do is you hold the burr and you butt it against the incisal edge. This will go and hit on the same spot over and over again. 
Now you run the burr from the buckle through into the palatal. This gives you an exact groove that is 2 millimeters tall. What you do now is you make two more grooves, thereby you have three grooves of 2 millimeters in depth. You take any long burr, you keep the burr slightly inclined towards the palatal surface. As you can see, this burr is slightly angled upwards. This is because the maxillary incisal edge has that palatal incline. With this burr, you go ahead and reduce the entire incisal edge. You have exactly 2 millimeter reduction. Friends, once the incisal edge is reduced, the last surface that we need to reduce is the lingual concavity or the portion immediately above the cingulum. As we all know here, we use the flame-shaped burr or the American football burr. A lot of times what I have seen clinicians do is under-reduce this area. Often they even land up over-reducing the incisal edge and making the incisal edge extremely thin. The problem here is the correct placement of the burr is not something that a lot of us are aware of. Simply put, keep the widest area of the burr seated into the deepest concavity of the tooth. Move it horizontally all the way through. It will uniformly reduce the concavity on the lingual or the palatal aspect without under reducing in a critical area or over reducing towards the incisal edge. Once you are through with all of this, your cross preparation is complete. You now go ahead with finishing of your preparation. For finishing friends on the labial aspect, the kit has something called as the DC 1.8 F burr. As you can see, this is a red ring burr. It allows for you to achieve a uniform 0.8 millimeters to 0.9 millimeter reduction on the labial area. That's an aesthetic area. You need a slightly thicker margin there. But towards the proximal or the lingual or the palatal margin, you can actually be a little more conservative and come down to a DC 1.2 F burr. These areas don't need as much reduction as the labial surface would. So let's look at conserving as much tooth structure possible. Once you're through with the entire preparation, this is how the final look of your preparation should be. Looking from the labial view, you have a wonderful equigingival margin that is uniform in width with a good taper to the entire tooth moving from the cervical through to the incisal edge. Looking from the palatal surface, once again, I prefer to keep my margin slightly supragingival. This allows for me to conserve tooth structure once again at the neck, which is the weakest area. You don't want your abutment teeth to fracture, which can be a concern in patients who have traumatic bites and the tooth has already been treated for a root canal. Looking from the proximal view, you can clearly appreciate that you have uniform plane 1 and plane 2 reduction. If the plane 2 reduction is less than adequate, often your patients may complain that the incisal edge is jutting forward. It's kind of violated the neutral zone. So to maintain that, make sure you have adequate amount of plane 2 reduction. When you look from the incisal edge, it's important that you should be able to see all 360 degrees of the margin. This makes sure that you don't have any undercuts in your preparation. The incisal edge should be relatively along the arch perimeter. Friends, metal-free restoration in a lot of senses are more conservative than PFM restorations. You can see in the image here, the amount of reduction required for metal-free is not as much as a PFM preparation requires. The blue arrow here, however, is extremely critical. I want all of you all to appreciate this vertical band of tooth structure present here. Remember when we were making our palatal margin, this burr had to be parallel to the plane one. This is the only area of a maxillary anterior tooth that provides for resistance form. Now imagine a situation if your burr angle was incorrect. Instead of being parallel, your burr was pointed outwards a little. What have you done? You've taken away this band of tooth structure that's going to provide the resistance form. A lot of times what happens is the prosthesis keeps coming out. This is because a mandibular incisor hits the maxillary incisor at an incline, thereby causing it to dislodge multiple times. Another case scenario, if your burr was angulated more towards the intraoral structures, you will land up with an undercut in this region. As earlier mentioned friends, this is indirect vision. 
it's important that you hold the burr parallel to the plane one and then simply move it backwards this just make sure that you don't land up with the correct uh, rather with the wrong angles towards this extremely critical area once again hope is the fact that this small little video would have helped you get more clarity towards anterior tooth preparation protocols here again friends use the correct burrs and it will make sure that each time you prepare you follow the principles of tooth preparation for metal free restorations thereby not just getting aesthetic and beautiful restorations but ones that also fulfill the biologic and the mechanical principle thereby you and your patient enjoys the fruit of this work friends if you like this video do share it with your colleagues I wish and hope that you pick up these birds thereby enjoying the quality and the design that has gone into making them. Until we meet again friends, bye bye.